question 10 from section 2, paper 2 of the 2024 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A group of students is investigating interference of sound waves. The students connect two loudspeakers to the same output of a signal generator. You can see the diagram there. It's loudspeaker 1 and loudspeaker 2. The signal generator produces a signal frequency of 1700 Hz. And for 3 marks, we have to calculate the wavelength of the sound produced by the speakers. Well, we know the wavelength V is equal to lambda F. So we have V for the speed of the waves equals F times lambda. And we know the speed of sound V we're going to use is going to be 340 meters per second. We know that the frequency of the sound waves is going to be 1700 hertz and we're asked to find the wavelength. Okay, we'll look at the equation. Wavelength is going to be equal to the wave speed divided by the frequency, which is going to be equal to wave speed, 340 meters per second, the speed of sound in air, divided by the frequency, 1700 hertz. That's seconds to minus one. So we end up with a wavelength lambda, and the wavelength is going to be equal to 0 0.20 meters. And that's the wavelength of these waves. Question 10, part B. As the microphone is moved from X to Y, regions of maxima and minima are detected. Point P is a distance of 1.80 meters from loudspeaker 1, and a distance of 1.5 meters from loudspeaker 2. You can see that in the diagram. Show by calculation whether constructive interference or destructive interference is detected at P. Well, we should remember our little chart. It's quite easy to remember. We know at the central maximum, where there's no path difference, uh, we have the central maximum. The first minimum will occur when the path difference is, uh, is equal to 0 0.5 of a wavelength or half a wavelength. And the first maximum uh, from the central maximum will be a path difference of one wavelength. And of course, the second minimum will be a path difference of 1.5 wavelengths. So what is the actual physical path difference? We've got 1.8 and 1.5. And therefore, the path difference, if I can write this out for you, the path difference is going to equal to 1.80 metres. Take away 1.50 metres. And that's going to give us a path difference of 0 0.30 metres. That's the path difference from that wave. But we know that the wavelength is 0 0.2 of a metre. We know that the wavelength lambda calculated previously is equal to 0 0.20 metres. So how many wavelengths is in the path difference? That's really what we're trying to find out here. So the number of wavelengths in the path difference, uh, we'll just say number of lambdas in the path difference. That's going to equal to the actual path difference, 0 0.30 metres divided by what one wavelength should be. And you can see we're going to get a number of wavelengths to the value of 1.5 wavelengths. So that path difference is 1.5 wavelengths. Now if we go to our kind of cheat sheet, if we can call it that, 1.5 wavelengths is the condition for the second minimum. And that means you'll hear no noise there. So we're going to have destructive interference at point P. Question 10 continued part C. Loudspeaker 1 is now disconnected from the signal generator. State the effect this has on the amplitude of the sound detected by the microphone at P. Well, let's take a look at a simulation of this from the famous site PHET. And here we have the situation here. You can see we've got speaker 1 and speaker 2 here. And we can see we've got a detector positioned along this line of the destructive interference. You're not going to get complete destructive interference here. You're always going to get a wee bit of kind of wave uh, when the two add together. But you get interference here. And you can see from this little diagram, if I move the detector down, you can see these are periods of what we call constructive interference with the waves have added together to give you a bigger amplitude. So that's like the third minimum here where you have got a kind of minimum wave like that. You can see if I can just move it to the, to the minimum part as close as I can. You can see that's about the minimum wave I get from that. There's the maximum, very high, and there is the minimum, which is there. Well, it's the third minimum. You won't get complete destructive interference. But the key thing is here, what happens if I remove one of those speakers? Well, if I remove one of those speakers, I'm taking away one set of waves and there'll be no interference taking place. So if I just remove this speaker, 
switch it off you can see that the wave is now going to get higher because you can see the little diagram there the waves becoming higher because you're going to get no interference taking place you need two sets of waves overlapping uh, to give you the constructive or destructive interference so the answer to that question is quite simply it says here loudspeaker one is now disconnected from the signal generator state the effect this has on the amplitude of the sound detected and the amplitude of the sound detected is going to increase and that's because you've removed the other wave which is interfering with it so you're going to hear a louder sound because of the louder amplitude.